Hi Saints of All Saints, it's your daily devotion for August 5th, 2021. Pastor Kristen here, good to be with you all. Uh, I wanted to share a favorite parable of mine, a favorite story with you all. And uh, it came to mind as I was reading one of our lectionary texts for this coming Sunday, which we will uh, spend more time with in worship this weekend. Um, but. I may not have time to tell this story as part of the sermon, so I wanted to share it with you as kind of a bonus and a way to get you reflecting on one of the texts that we'll be reading this Sunday. It comes from Ephesians. Uh, in the lectionary, we're reading Ephesians 4, 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. But I'm just going to read you a couple of verses of that and then share a story with you. Uh, from verse 31, it says, put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. There are several versions of this story floating around, but this one comes from M. Scott Peck's book, A Different Drum. He writes, there is a story, perhaps a myth. Typical of mythic stories, it has many versions. Also typical, the source of the version I'm about to tell is obscure. I cannot remember whether I heard or read it or where or when. Furthermore, I do not even know the distortions I myself have made in it. All I know for certain is that this version came to me with a title. It is called The Rabbi's Gift. The story concerns a monastery that had fallen upon hard times. Once a great order, as a result of waves of anti-monastic persecution in the 17th and 18th centuries, and the rise of secularism in the 19th, all its branch houses were lost and it had become decimated to the extent that there were only five monks left in the decaying mother house, Abbot and four others, all over 70 in age. Clearly, it was a dying order. In the deep woods surrounding the monastery, there was a little hut that a rabbi from a nearby town occasionally used for a hermitage. Through their many years of prayer and contemplation, the old monks had become a bit psychic, so they could always sense when the rabbi was in his hermitage. The rabbi is in the woods. The rabbi is in the woods again, they would whisper to each other. As he agonized over the imminent death of his order, it occurred to the abbot at one such time to visit the hermitage and ask the rabbi if by some possible chance he could offer any advice that might save the monastery. The rabbi welcomed the abbot at his hut. But when the abbot explained the purpose of his visit, the rabbi could only commiserate with him. I know how it is, he explained. The spirit has gone out of the people. It is the same in my town. Almost no one comes to the synagogue anymore. So the old abbot and the old rabbi wept together. Then they read parts of the Torah and quietly spoke of deep things. The time came when the abbot had to leave. They embraced each other. It has been a wonderful thing that we should meet after all these years, the abbot said, but I have still failed in my purpose for coming here. Is there nothing you can tell me, no piece of advice you can give me that would help me save my dying order? No, I am sorry, the rabbi responded. I have no advice to give. The only thing I can tell you is that the Messiah is one of you. When the abbot returned to the monastery, his fellow monks gathered around him to ask, well, what did the rabbi say? He couldn't help, the abbot answered. We just wept and read the Torah together. The only thing he did say, just as I was leaving, it was something cryptic, was that the Messiah is one of us. I don't know what he meant. 
In the days and weeks that and months that followed, the old monks pondered this and wondered whether there was any possible significance to the rabbi's words. The Messiah is one of us? Could he possibly have meant one of us monks here at the monastery? If that's the case, which one? Do you suppose he meant the abbot? Yes, if he meant anyone, he probably meant Father Abbot. He has been our leader for more than a generation. On the other hand, he might have meant Brother Thomas. Certainly Brother Thomas is a holy man. Everyone knows that Thomas is a man of light. Certainly he could not have meant Brother Eldred. Eldred gets crotchety at times. But come to think of it, even though he is a thorn in people's sides, when you look back on it, Edred, Ed, Eldred is virtually always right often very right. Maybe the rabbi did mean Brother Eldred, but surely not Brother Philip. Philip is passive, a real nobody. But then, almost mysteriously, he has a gift for somehow always being there when you need him. He just magically appears by your side. Maybe Philip is the Messiah. Of course, the rabbi didn't mean me. <laughs> He couldn't possibly have meant me. I'm just an ordinary person. Yet, supposing he did? Suppose I am the Messiah. Oh, God, not me. I couldn't be that much for you, could I? As they contemplated in this manner, the old monks began to treat each other with extraordinary respect on the off chance that one among them might be the Messiah and on the off-off chance that each monk himself might be the Messiah, they began to treat themselves with extraordinary respect. Because the forest in which it was situated was beautiful, it so happened that people still occasionally came to visit the monastery, to picnic on its tiny lawn, to wander along some of its paths, even now and then to go to the dilapidated chapel to meditate. As they did so, without even being conscious of it, they sensed this aura of extraordinary respect that now began to surround the five old monks and seemed to radiate out from them and permeate the atmosphere of the place. There was something strangely attractive, even compelling about it. Hardly knowing why, they began to come back to the monastery more frequently to picnic, to play, to pray. They began to bring their friends and show them this special place. And their friends brought their friends. Then it happened that some of the younger men who came to visit the monastery and started to talk more and more with the old monks, after a while, one of them asked if he could join them. Then another, and another. So within a few years, the monastery once again became a thriving order and thanks to the rabbi's gift, a vibrant center of light and spirituality in the realm. Imagine what happens in a community that dedicates itself to being imitators of Christ and serving Christ in one another. Be blessed, my friends. I'll look forward to exploring this text with you more on Sunday. Take care.